Very yeah. nice. So what's on our agenda today? Uh, after this, in a moment, after I've introduced the agenda, Bonnie Moyo from Ilri is going to welcome us all and get, set the scene. We'll do a small introductions exercise, and then Cynthia Mugo from Ilri will introduce why we're here in a sense, and then Michael will give the big picture, what is the project and what are we trying to do? And then we're going to go break into some working groups to deep, dig a bit deeper at some of the issues we're working on. Then a quick feedback session, and Michael will wrap everything up. So I think, Michael, we need to turn over now to Bonnie, um, to see Bonnie, so Bonnie Moyer, and you can stop sharing, I think. Um, Bonnie is a Deputy Director General at ILRI, uh, responsible for biosciences, I believe. Bonnie, over to you, welcome. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Peter, and good afternoon, colleagues, and um, good morning, where, wherever you are connecting from. Um, it is indeed my honor and privilege this afternoon to welcome you all to this consultation. Uh, I'm pleased to note that we have or we are expecting participants from more than 10 organizations. So I'm hoping that more will join in the coming uh, minutes. Uh, colleagues, today we're meeting to reflect on an important topic that is livestock. Uh, in developing countries, we know that livestock plays a multiple um, problem solving role in the areas of uh, nutrition, food security, employment creation, gender equality, and poverty alleviation. Uh, globally, it is a major contributor to economic growth and prosperity. So balancing these positives, livestock production also has a challenge where it also emits significant greenhouse gases and therefore can cause environmental uh, damages. Um, domestic animals may transmit diseases to people and overconsumption of animal source foods may cause various uh, issues. However, without significant investment in the livestock sector, both to grow this sector its many benefits and also its ability to mitigate the harms it can cause. We, we risk failing to meet many of our 2030 agenda objectives. Um, colleagues, if you look at ODA figures um, from 2019, the agriculture sector received uh, very little, only 3.9% out of which the livestock sector received 0.17%. And if you look at the budgets of many national governments, the figures would not be any different uh, at all. Livestock continues to receive very little budget allocation, even though livestock accounts for almost 40% of agriculture GDP, but sometimes this figure is even higher in some of the low and middle income countries. So in order to bring increased attention to this sector and this scenario and, and funding for livestock priorities, uh, the Gates Foundation invested in an ill led program called the Global Sustainable Livestock Advocacy for Development a mouthful, but it's glad and short. Uh, so the issue there is about uh, sustainable livestock advocacy for development. Um, so some of you in this meeting today are familiar with GLAD. However, for the purposes of others, I'll just give a brief introduction. GLAD seeks to ensure there's a nuanced evidence-driven debate around how livestock contributes to sustainable development in low and middle income countries. GLAD highlights the important role that livestock can play in achieving multiple development goals in low and middle income countries, whilst recognizing that livestock systems must change to be more sustainable, affordable, and equitable. So in 2016, that's when the GLAD program began and is currently finishing its second phase. The project has evolved over time and the team has been working very hard at developing a new phase, 
where we will be prioritizing working with partners like you. So we are excited to share with you our initial ideas for the third phase of GLAD program. Our focus today, therefore, is to get uh, feedback and inputs uh, from this group, which is gathered today, but most importantly, identify actions and collaborations that can help us to continue to contribute to addressing the global challenges, some of which include our aspiration to contribute to ending hunger, improve nutrition, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and increase climate adaptation, but also enhance the livelihoods of smallholder farmers in low and middle income countries. So with those few words, uh, colleagues would like to position GLAD to also support you, you and your organization uh, agenda in the livestock sector. This is, uh, this is our partnership agenda. And after today's discussions, I hope that the GLAD program will be the vehicle where we all work together as we envisage um, better lives through livestock. With that, I would like to again, thank you for joining us today. And now would like to hand it back to you, Peter. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bonnie. Uh, thank you for setting the scene and explaining why we're here on a large scale. And Michael will go into some of the details a bit later. What I'd like to do now really is just a quick introduction to exercise. Yeah. And we're gonna go over to Menti and I just put in the chat a link for you and a code for you. So what we wanna do really is just to spend five minutes talking around livestock, talking around why livestock are important, talking around why we think livestock might be important or not important, and then just do a quick exercise. So you should be able to go to the link in the chat. Otherwise, go to menti.com and enter a code, 3459 and then 0426. And then, Michael, I'd like to share my screen if possible so that um, we, can see the, we can see the results. So I'm going to just go ahead and do that, if that's OK with you. Could you tell me what the acronym L LMIC stands for? Low I missed and middle-income countries. Oh, well, thank you. That was obvious. Sorry, yes. Cheers, Low man. and middle-income countries. Yeah. So, thanks, John. Yeah, so basically, you should be able to just, there's a bunch of statements here, and this is more of a fun. It's not like it's a serious test of your personality or, <clears throat> or character. We just like to take a few, take, take, to, to, to vote on some of the posts, just to get us a feeling of who we are and why we are and, what we think about livestock. I'm hoping everybody's there. I don't know whether everybody has made it. I'm not seeing anybody having done the first uh, screen yet. Is, everybody, is anybody not, is anybody struggling to find their way? Maybe the questions are very complicated. Um, I can see two people have done. So let me, I don't know whether I should share the results already. Okay, I can see five people are there and <clears throat> it's more for the fun of it. So what I'm seeing in the results, let me just see that the message in the chat that somebody's struggling to find. Complicated questions, yeah, sorry, Isabel. It's a, it's a Wednesday afternoon, but we need to be, yeah. So I'm trying to think, we see some optimists. Um, we're nine, so I'm hoping to get 17 or 18 people to take the survey, the fun survey. You should be able to see the results on my screen for each of the different priorities, um, the different, uh, not priorities, but each of the different legs of the spider, or the webs of the spider. So we're seeing, um, uh, hang on a moment, I think, and wait till we get 15 people. We're up to 12. Perhaps not a surprise, but let's see what we're seeing. I'm looking for three more people to take the take the survey. That's number thirteen. So two more, and then maybe we'll have a look to see what, what the screen. So I'm showing the results on my screen. You should be able to see the results on my screen on the Zoom. If you're also back on backwards and forwards with the Menti, good. We're up to seventeen. Okay, that must be almost everybody, or not maybe close to everybody. Um, this is not a very scientific uh, um, method. I know there's a lot of scientists here. I'm always very, very scared to show something like this. So what are we beginning to see? Um, 
I don't know if I look if I if I ask Isabel, Isabel, you're an economist, right? You're so you know a lot about numbers. Do we see uh, any? Do we see a trend of any kind? If I look at this diagram, Isabel, are you seeing a trend or uh, something we should be curious about? Are you able to see the screen, Isabel? Yes, I yes I am. Uh, yes, I think there's uh, there's definitely we are <laughs> we are here. Um, between friends of livestock, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> people who, yes, are optimistic, you know, I think it's about livestock offering many, many positives. Um, yes, definitely. And then the, the, the one, the antagonisms, I think, um, as well, showing as well that uh, people don't agree with that, uh, with that mm -hmm. statement and therefore being very quite, uh, quite, quite low. Uh, and then, yeah, I think very definitely we are among amongst friends, which is which is nice. <laughs> but as well, we need to be challenged. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Isabel. So we also have some boosters, and some people. There's a, there's a bit of two point five. But yeah, there's there's some there's some there's some pessimism and some pragmatism in the room as well. Okay, you should be able now. I'm going to pass you to the next. Um, you should be here to a second question. So basically, it's just a building on that first question. If you can give us your name, and I'm hoping you can see the screen. If you're back on the menti, you should see a second screen now. Um, and what I'd like you to do is to add your name and choose one of the traits where you're a pessimist, a pragmatist, an antagonist, a booster, an optimist. What's, a, what's your livestock trait if you think about investing in livestock? Um, I don't know whether everyone's, have you found your way to that screen? Yes, George, great, thank you. George, an optimist from Wasafiri, great. So we are on the right screen. If you go back to the Minty, and John, a pragmatist or a realist, okay, that's, uh, that's good. Michael's a pragmatist. We have a, an, an anonymous optimist, that's good. Giving, hopefully you give us your name just so we get a sense of who we are. And you should be able to just put your name, Marianne, thank you. An optimist and a booster even, okay, yes. Rupsha is an optimist, optimist, realist. Okay, so we're, we're an interesting bunch. John, maybe you can elaborate a bit. Pragmatist or realist, is there a difference there? Or um, what's your thinking there? Well, like you've you taken down the explanations from the screen, so I couldn't remember what a pragmatist, <laughs> what the example was. But I mean, for me, Putting realist there is, you know, it's, it's not about what I want to see, whether I'm an optimist and because I'd love to see more, you know, livestock or pessimist because I'm afraid there'll be less livestock. Um, it's more a question of the realities, the, the, you know, the need for livestock in certain places, the, um, the inevitability of livestock production, um, but also the inevitability of change and the need to understand and foresee the changes and react to them. Okay, that's probably a pragmatist. Thank you. Mariam, you're an optimist, but also a booster. Where, what, is, what is the boosting? Where are you boosting, Mariam? Well, we're uh, working quite strongly through the uh, recently designated International Year for Rangelands and Pastoralists to raise awareness and change narratives. Uh, we think that a lot of what's happening here is a, is a uh, mismatched uh, narrative between what is reality and what can be done and what people think uh, livestock are doing to this planet. Okay, thank you. I'm seeing other people, there's quite a lot of pragmatists, optimists. Um, I see Ian is here from Pastor Ian. An optimist, is that an optimistic pragmatist or a pragmatic optimist? Ian, what's where are you sitting on all of this? Then we'll go back to the agenda. I think I'm I'm sitting in between. Yes, I think we have to have an optimistic outlook, but uh, let's go forward with a pragmatic pragmatic approach. I'm rather like Mariam uh, in that front, uh, seeing new new narratives uh, available, but we need to think about how to situate them within the wider political economy of the policy debate. Okay, so thanks. I think uh, most people have voted, a few people less this time. I see a lot of op optimists and a lot of pragmatists here. So good, Michael, I'm gonna stop sharing my slide and I think I'm gonna hand back to you. And I just wanted to say we have a nice bunch. If, every, if anybody hasn't had a chance, if you wanna stick your name into the, 
if, if you could put your name in the chat, if you want to put your name there, tell us who you are and what you work for, that would be good. Sorry, Serena, the code didn't quite work. I don't know why not. Great. So, um, Michael, you need to go back. And I think we're handing over to Cynthia. Yeah. Please stay uh, over to Cynthia. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Can you hear me well? No. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, thanks. Perfectly. Okay, thank you, everyone, and welcome again. Um, and as Bonnie said in her opening, we have been hard at work conceptualizing this third phase of GLAD. And in the process, we talked to a lot of individuals within ILRI, outside of ILRI, and some are even in this meeting today. So what we really want to use to to what we want to do today with this meeting is to present to you this project that we're calling GLAD, the third phase of it, for you to confirm, validate, and improve our ideas. We want to also explore collaboration potential and synergies. We'd really, really like GLAD to be another avenue or vehicle where you too, in your own institutions, can amplify your work. So we'd like to work with you to amplify also to also further your own agendas. So we really, are looking forward to this meeting to be the space where we open communication channels and start working together. So let's see if we can get there by the end of this one and a half hours. Michael can take us through, give us an overview, glad now. You are muted, Michael. Thank you, Isabel. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, I thought I was I could have talked for a couple of minutes without realizing. Uh, thanks, everybody. And thanks, uh, Bunny and Peter and Cynthia for the introductions. Uh, I'm just going to take you through an over, uh, overview of GLAD and an assessment of what, what has been done in the last six years uh, and kind of a reflection and then how we've organized third phase, the third phase based on lessons learned and discussions with partners and stakeholders, as Cynthia mentioned. Uh, so our starting points, and I think, again, Bunny probably mentioned this really well in her own, in her background, so I don't have to say too much, uh, but, you know, you know, some of the background and it's, you know, the, the, the challenges of, of, of livestock are, we, we know well, uh, and overall, there's a strong evidence base that the sector can deliver a range of development outcomes focused on better nutrition, uh, uh, you know, nutrition for women and children, job opportunities, greater empowerment for women, and enhanced resilience and adaptation. Uh, we also recognize that what we mean by the multi-solving uh, power of, of sustainable livestock systems is that it can solve multiple problems at the same time. For instance, we know that, you know, for improved production can mitigate the negative effects of livestock. It can help with animal welfare and animal health. Uh, and it can, you know, also kind of uh, mitigate greenhouse greenhouse gas emissions or environmental damage. So there's these co-benefits that we see, and you know, it can solve multiple problems at multiple times. On the other hand, we also see uh, the impacts of the anti-livestock, and the, you know, and rightly so, some of the concerns they have about uh, livestock and how livestock has been done, particularly in industrial situations, uh, and. We, we recognize that also kind of in, you know, sustainable livestock uh, in low and middle income countries, it doesn't really match the potential uh, that it deserves in a sense. And as we heard from uh, Bunny, uh, you know, we see that there's greater investments in agriculture and some of the other commodities, while livestock is one of the fastest growing uh, commodities in low and middle income countries. Uh, so we're dealing with this kind of issue of how do we kind of increase investments with all these concerns about livestock as well. Uh, so for GLAD, we really want to be able to, uh, you know, grow the intellectual. So it's looking at the discourses, the financial and pi policy support for the sustainable livestock agenda. Uh, and really to show, we're not trying to promote or advocate livestock in that sense, as ILRI is particularly as an evidence-based organization. We want to provide a more nuanced view. We want to provide evidence-based advocacy in that sense for, you know, bringing the nuance, bringing sides together, bringing groups together and really discussing how do we make, uh, how do we make livestock uh, better, more sustainable that so it can contribute to different development outcomes, whether that's sustainable transformation of food systems or nutrition or health. So again, 
recognizing that we need to change, but how do we do that and how do we make sure that the livestock is delivering the benefits that it has? Uh, so just really briefly, live, you know, in terms of GLAD and its evolution, we've been going for six years since 2016. And I think in ILRI, we've really learned ourselves and it's really been a learning-based approach uh, to how we go about advocacy and engaging in uh, all these different kinds of processes at the global, national, and regional level levels. So in the beginning in GLAD one, we were really focused on you know, GLAD advocacy for development, really focused on evidence generation. So we spent a lot of time looking at the evidence, developing messages, and kind of testing out comms and media. Uh, and then in 2019, we went to the second phase. Uh, and this was really about focusing on how do we advance investments in sustainable and equitable livestock systems. And here we were much more focused on innovative campaigns and communication products, which we'll take you through, uh, proactive media engagement. And then working with and through ambassadors, I think many, most of you are on the GLAD, uh, the GLAD community network, and we've been able to do a lot more proactive media engagement with a range of people. And again, working with and through ambassadors, you know, so it's better often for us to not just as livestock uh, organizations advocate livestock on our own, but work with and through those who uh, see livestock as a real development, uh, you know, solution. Uh, and then again, more conservative influencing, particularly at the, a number of events, particularly the UNFFS, CFS, and in livestock master plans for people who might not know that uh, acronym. Uh, and then particularly in One Health because of the pandemic. And as we move into phase three, as you'll see, we're really focusing on three big changes, more strategic interventions, moving from uh, kind of a discourse on the lack of investment in livestock to how do we broker investable solutions and then more targeted engagement and communications to support these strategic interventions and really to build alliances with partners like yourselves who are here uh, and strengthen the partnerships that are already there. So uh, just really quickly, some of the self-assessment. So as you know, Cynthia said, we've been going through kind of a assessment period and a diagnostic and design phase for the last couple of months. Uh, and some of the strengths that we've seen is that, like, like we've mentioned in this phase, we've really had a lot more strategic engagement and partnerships, uh, particularly, I would say, at the, the UNFFS, which really kind of showed the, the you know, kind of the, the issues that we see within livestock, both the benefits that we see that a lot of groups saw the benefits of livestock, but then a lot of contention even within the livestock sector. We're able to reach out, and that's one of the things with uh, GLAD is what we want to reach beyond just livestock uh, related programs or processes and really focus on others. So for nutrition and growth, we've worked with EAT, uh, you know, working with the CFS and the, uh, the, the high, le high level panels uh, and the global landscape forum. So really reaching beyond just the livestock world and trying to show uh, frame livestock as a sustainable development solution. Uh, we've had a lot more diversity of products, as you can see, that we show here in campaigns. So really kind of trying to hit a little bit more heavy using what we call an evidence-based approach campaigns, but also having more human-based messaging. So using the evidence combined with some of the messaging. Uh, we've also, uh, you know, uh, mobilized, like we've said, of more diverse champions and ambassadors. And we started to focus on some key narratives that have come up. For, come up, particularly uh, nutrition, One Health, and climate uh, adaptation and resilience. We spent a lot of time looking at gender issues, and that will be another focus within uh, phase three of how do we mainstream gender and livestock in the development nexus, where we see a lot of benefits as livestock is a real kind of, uh, you know, gender, uh, gender tool to empower gender uh, issues. Uh, and then linkages to the national level through livestock master plans and through product development processes where we've had some uh, gains in being able to put some livestock indicators into the, the product processes. Uh, again, some of the improvements and implications for what we've seen is we've done a lot and we've worked upon a lot of issues. Uh, we've identified in our, in our kind of uh, assessment of different narratives and issues and topics, more than 10 of them. So we really realize that we need to do better targeting and focus. Uh, and more explicitly, uh, you know, identify priority topics. Uh, we need to engage better with partners and collaborators. We, 
We really, and this is part of this meeting today, is to really improve the process of co-creation and be more deliver, deliberate about partnerships and make sure that there's complementariness. So making sure that the uh, GLAD agenda can really support your agendas out there as well. Uh, and then again, this move from kind of just uh, developing a group of livestock champions and a network to really kind of linking livestock champions to, uh, to investors and brokering solutions. We want to produce communication products as always more smarter and then use metrics as a way to really understand uh, how we're working. Uh, so with that, I'll just go over quickly how we've designed GLAD3. And again, we'll, we're hoping in the working groups to get a lot of inputs from everybody. Uh, if you do have questions or comments, put them into the chat and we'll, we'll be dealing with them there. I think Peter's looking at those right now as well. Uh, so GLAD3 will be about three years. Uh, it's about, uh, you know, about $3 million for those three years as well. And we're still working out the final, uh, you know, steps uh, within the proposal process with the Gates Foundation. So it's not 100%, but we, we feel very confident and, and hope we will continue on. Uh, so uh, the initial value proposition, I think one of the main features of GLAD is the use of the four intervention areas uh, that we've had, which is, you know, uh, evidence generation, really synthesizing the evidence and making sure that's our foundation, targeted communications, uh, and then this idea now of brokerage, bringing together uh, investors and livestock solutions and champions, and then influencing and engagement at different levels. And those are kind of like our four pillars that form the basis of GLAD. Uh, and it's, you know, through this multi-pronged approach, that we see increased understanding of uh, livestock role in sustainable development and increased investment in positive uh, uh, policy outcomes, hopefully. And we do this by really helping to amplify and elevate the evidence. We're not just advocating blindly, but really using the evidence in a, a nuanced way uh, and looking for issues, particularly beyond the livestock sector. So how do we frame livestock again as a, a sustainable development solution? Uh, we want to focus this phase particularly on investable solutions and their uptake. Uh, and again, working with multiple partners uh, beyond research. Uh, and we want to foster this uh, community of livestock champions, uh, as well as take more strategic and in, in impactful engagement approaches. So really focusing on not trying to do so much, but really focusing on key areas where we can have bigger impact, of course. Uh, so, uh, one of the things that uh, one of the major changes, as I mentioned uh, in GLAD3, is this focus on three core themes plus a global theme. And we went through, we've developed, uh, we went through and identified about eight to nine narratives or topics that we saw as key. And then through kind of a process of discussion with, uh, with a group, you know, with, a, with everybody, we based it on kind of a couple criteria for how we chose these you know, three areas plus the global area. One is critical for low and middle income countries, that it was relevant at the global to national levels, uh, strong potential for investment, that we have strong champions in these areas. We have robust evidence as well. Uh, and that we likelihood that we can actually have some impacts uh, in you know, make progress in a short time frame, uh, And we want to uh, be nuanced to not just show positive aspects, but show some of the, the trade-offs as well. Uh, so we came up with these four areas. We have kind of a global area. And again, we'll be going into working groups to discuss these more about livestock and context with its multiple roles and goals and how do we kind of link it to some of these wider global processes. Looking another, sorry, another uh, acronym, looking at livestock derived foods and safe nutrition and healthy diets. And, We've done a lot there, and I think a lot of you have done a lot of great work there as well. So how do we kind of continue that? Uh, something that's coming up a lot is particularly livestock, not as a climate problem, but really as one of the main climate solutions. So climate change and adaptation and resilience and the role that livestock can play. Uh, and then not just looking at rangelands for rangelands sake, but again, rangelands as uh, one of the key aspects for land restoration, looking at land use issues. Uh, and then biodiversity and looking at how with a role that, uh, you know, rangelands can play in biodiversity conservation or even carbon storage and things like that. So these are the, the, the four priority areas. And these will be addressed again at different levels 
of intensity in those four intervention approaches that we'll go through. Uh, and then from this, uh, we developed kind of four work packages and four outcome statements. And I'm not gonna go through all of these, but we'll, you'll have these in your working groups as well. Uh, but it's really, most of it's really about targeting investors uh, and uh, donors uh, to grow and share their in, you know, kind of investments uh, and grant portfolios in these different target areas. So uh, we have four kind of work packages, uh, again, using these, these four areas. And I'll show you how that kind of plays out in a matrix approach. And again, we want to embed gender with, uh, and gender issues within each of these outcome areas. Uh, so to see how this fits together, uh, we have, again, these four interventions approaches, just to show you really quickly. Again, we have the evidence and, you know, evidence of the results and the potential returns, looking at trade-offs and, you know, really synthesized evidence, bringing together not only ILRI evidence, but evidence from around uh, the livestock sector. Uh, we want to have powerful communications. And again, this guy, idea of brokered uh, solutions, which I'll go over in a bit. Uh, and then targeted engagement and uh, uh, targeted engagement at different international, regional, and uh, national levels. And again, we're going to apply that at different uh, levels, and I'll kind of show you how that works in a second right here. Uh, so we have these intervention intensities and our priority issues. So this is just an example, but kind of has how we are starting to see that, and we want to go over that with you uh, in the working groups. But looking at something, let's say, for... Uh, for land, biodiversity, and nature in terms of the rangelands, we really need to build the evidence base. And we've discussed that a lot with uh, Fiona and even Ian, I think, mentioned this on a recent discussion. So, you know, that will be the focus of a lot of the work is more on the evidence kind of pillar. Uh, and then maybe in the year, to, in, in kind of a year or two years time, we'll start focusing more on communication. Whereas with the nutrition, We've seen a lot of the great work from uh, the UN nutrition reports, and we've seen all the great work from GAIN uh, as to, you know, a lot, we have a lot of the evidence. So it's really more about how do we do the communication, focus a little bit more on the brokerage and the influencing. Uh, so again, just, and that's something that we want to go over with everybody to kind of reconfirm and get inputs to see how we are seeing, you know, what we need to focus on in each of these different areas. Uh, and then finally, I'm just going to go quickly through the brokerage function, which for us is something really new, and it's really something, ex I, yeah, experimental, and we would like to get a lot of input into that. So, uh, you know, another key functional area is a way move away from this idea, there was this discourse that there's a lack of investment, and really understanding how do we connect and better connect, uh, you know, uh, the, the livestock champions and solutions uh, to uh, to court, you know, investors, corporate investors, entrepreneurs, and even policymakers. Uh, we've seen that there's a disconnect. Uh, and we've also seen that solutions in livestock are also maybe not framed so greatly for other development uh, purposes. Uh, we saw this, for example, in the last COP where we were working with uh, SEBI and the, the Livestock Data for Development Group, where we kind of collated a lot of great solutions for resilience and adaptation but they really weren't framed so appropriately. So, you know, again, it's about connecting, but also framing and how do we improve the framing of livestock to show that it's a, a really uh, interesting solution. Uh, and so in this phase, we really want to test out this approach for more purposeful, interactive and productive matchmaking. How will we do this? Uh, we'll do this through kind of a, a real purposeful approach that focuses on the process and linking people to uh, matchmaking or linking them to different processes or to different groups of people uh, and really trying to focus on that rather than trying to collect all the different solutions that we have in presenting that. So really kind of tailor-made matchmaking for different situations in different areas. And we're looking at not just the research innovations, but also development innovations that might come from like Heifer or from Venture 37, from development partners as well and then uh, linking to the private sector and policymakers and investors. Uh, and again, what we're trying to do, we won't try to create our own space, but really go to the spaces that are already there. So for instance, we know that AGRF has a deal room. How can we work with them to create a really meaningful interaction between livestock solutions and champions and some of the donors going there? We might go to trade fairs or expos. 
Uh, there's also, again, specific issue processes like COP27, uh, GLF that we could kind of uh, insert ourselves into, or with the UNFFS and National Food System Transformation Pathways. So really trying to find uh, places that we can go to rather than building the field of dreams ourselves. Uh, and uh, so again, to sum it up, in GLAD3, we're gonna be really moving to more of a, a targeted approach in three areas in the nutrition and food security, adaptation and resilience, and land and biodiversity. We really wanna move from a lack of investment to this matchmaking and to a brokerage or an accelerator function with livestock, linking livestock champions to investors. Uh, and then third, really strengthening our alliances with like-minded organizations to really influence and engage in different areas. Uh, so thank you, uh, that's it from me. Peter, is there any key questions or comments that we have to address at this stage? or clarification? Um, I'm not seeing any. Um, so I think we can just go ahead, Michael, with, uh, <coughs> with, the, with, the next, with the next things. I'm not seeing any questions. There were a couple of questions about what is LDF and the difference between LDF and um, ASF, but that's been covered. So we can go ahead, I think. Great. Uh, I do. Are you just going to introduce the exercise then? So this is. Yep, I can do that if you like. So um, I think you have. Is it? Is this the slide or is there? Yes. Yeah, so this is the next slide. So what we're going to do is we're going to break up. Michael's given us the big picture. So our idea is we would like to break into four groups, and we're going to have around thirty minutes, and we're going to. Um, I'm just Isabel. I'm just going to post you the link. Yep. Um, here we go. So we're going to break into thirty minutes, and we're going to go to four groups. One group is with kind of looking at the global the global piece, and these are organized around those four outcomes or the four work packages that we talked about. So one group is the global group with Cynthia. Um, we'd like to have a conversation around livestock and that nutrition, food security um, piece. We'd like to have another group looking at livestock and climate adaptation and resilience, the one around that rangelands, the piece about land and biodiversity. So in each case, we have people, um, we have myself, Michael, Isabel, and Cynthia will be kind of combining facilitation rapporteuring and we have a few specific questions. Um, I saw a message, Michael, from Isabel saying that some, one of the colleagues has a hand up. Um, I, I don't see that myself, but. Yeah, yeah I, so that, so let me then. Peter, why don't you finish up and then you can, we can yeah. break, you know, we can, Mariam can ask her question okay. and then we can break into group. Okay, so let me then introduce, if you go to the next slide, so we've got basically what we want to do in the group. So if you go to the next slide, Michael. That's the four groups. Okay, so the group one, this is Cynthia's group, and uh, you will discover who you are when you turn up. Here we're really trying to, we have some specific questions for the global group, and that's more about um, around the, 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 the kind of the approach, how do we best engage with donors, uh, with investors, uh, which topics are we needing to, to do put more leadership effort into, what are some of the key ingredients for this acceleration brokerage, and other some added values that GLAD would bring. So this is specific questions for that group. Maybe the next slide, Michael, for the other three groups. So for the other three groups, we have these are more kind of topical groups. We're also trying to identify basically if we're working, uh, looking for food security, for example, who are the movers and shakers beyond the livestock uh, sector per se? Who do we really need to engage with to really leverage greater investment? We like to look at the balance between those different interventions. We talked about the evidence, the communication, the brokerage, the influencing. What's the right balance? Should we be, you know, we kind of hypothesize that all the evidence is there for nutrition. We just have to communicate it. Whereas for rangelands, there's missing evidence. So let's just double check that. Are there any critical upcoming events or processes where we must engage in the coming year or two or three years? And then same question about added values. So that's what we'd like to do. We'd like to go away for half an hour uh, and Michael's going to break us in. So Michael, you can go, yep. Um, over to you. We have a question, I think, Michael, right? From somebody? Yeah. So Mariam, do you have a quick question that you wanted to ask? Yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a clarifying question or two before we break up. Um, and I'm sorry if I'm a bit slow in, in the chat. I should have put it into the chat. I do apologize. Let me turn on my video as well. Um, 
Look, uh, first of all, Michael, thank you so much. It's always great to hear you. you you're a great communicator and uh, very much appreciate your, your speech. And uh, having read the draft concept note as well, so I'm putting those two together, for the document that was circulated and your, your presentation, it leaves me with two key questions. Um, one is that I'm, I'm struggling to understand uh, what are we really talking, who are we talking about, who are we advocating for? Uh, you keep saying livestock, 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 livestock. Okay, fine. But, um, but you know, you really do have to make this more people-centered. So who are we talking about? Are we talking about smallholders? Are we talking about mid-level entrepreneurs who have very different, um, you know, conditions and processes? Are we talking about corporations? And I don't, I'm not talking about the investor part yet. That's my second question. I'm talking about who, who is, who are we trying to help here? And I'm sorry, but that just doesn't come out uh, through this. And I, maybe because I haven't been so, so closely focused on GLAD in the past, I do know that the efforts that you led to, to help the IYRP process were very much smallholder uh, focused. Thank you for that and the pastoralists and so on. But is GLAD3 going beyond that or, or what? So, and I think this is relevant to all three working, all four working groups. We need to know who it is that you still want to advocate for. Um, and that brings me to the question, who are the innovators? What are we talking about? Is, are, are these smallholder traditional knowledge innovators who are using modern tools like digital economy and so on to innovate or are we talking about a techno-driven kind of innovation in order to multiply production and meet some global presumed goal, right? Uh, so please, if you could say, give us a few bits of guidance as to how Elry and Gates Foundation are looking at this. And then my second question very much related is, um, yeah, you keep talking about investable solutions and the investors. Well, it's quite clear who the donors are. That's usually very clear. But what, what are we talking about when we say investors? Uh, in some parts of the world, um, large scale investors are very difficult for smallholders to, to work with. In some parts of the world, they have a monopoly. Over, uh, over pricing and so on. That's very difficult for smallholders. Um, in some parts of the world, uh, for example, in Kenya, in Morocco, in Norway, there are lawsuits against investors putting in renewable energy onto rangelands, for example. So again, what are we, what do you have in your mind? What do you envisage when you're saying investors? That would, um, I think, help us very much also. To, um, to do this. I think, uh, uh, and, and maybe coming back to my first question about who, uh, are we talking about extensive production systems or are we talking about intensive production systems or something in between the mixed systems? Uh, so please, it, it would really help me not sort of coming in cold to better understand your scope here. Okay. Thanks. Great. No, those are great questions. And uh, I mean, I, I think there's two points. I want not to take it away from it, but I think this is something that we could also go into the group. And I think in the groups, you can discuss this, particularly when you talk about, you know, uh, who are we who are we advocating for? I think that is going to be different in different situations, but it's really a focus on low and middle income countries. It's a focus on smallholders, of course. I think that's something that we all look at. But it could be looking at different aspects of the value chain of where you, where you want to intervene, or in the food system itself. You know, there's a lot more talk about that. So, uh, you know, who are we advocating for? I would say it's you know, of course, it's not for industrial corporations, but it's looking for invest. I think the key words that we have are sustainable livestock systems in all its diversity, and we know that's a huge encompassing term, and that two. Uh, is that it's equitable and sustainable. So we're looking at you know equitable 
investments as well as targeting equitable solutions and interventions. And I think, who are we advocating for? I think it is, you know, I mean, unless in, you know, Isabel or Cynthia or Peter could correct me if I'm wrong or Bunny, but really at the end of the day, it is for smallholders and it's for, uh, you know, you know, the rural, you know, rural or maybe even peri-urban people who are working smallholder systems in uh, low and middle income countries. We're not talking about how we're going to change American or Western or European systems. Uh, with the rangelands is a good example of, you know, uh, a movement that crosses, you know, time scales and geographies in terms of like, it's not just low and middle income countries, but there's a lot of pastoralists in other countries, but supporting that type of effort. So I think that's, you know, I think you, you all will have to define that. And all of us will define that in these kind of uh, work packages as well. So I think that's a great issue. Uh, investable solutions. Uh, and uh, I would say, again, it's like, who are we trying to target? We're trying to target uh, kind of like kind of traditional donors, but new donors. We're looking at, you know, kind of other funds that we could leverage, whether it's kind of green climate funds or whether it's, you know, you know, again, like a uh, private sector that does have corporate social responsibility. I don't think we want to go to Olam necessarily sometimes or, you know, where there are problems, but we're going to investors, private sector that might be looking for sustainable solutions. And again, that has to match up with the advocacy as well. So, uh, and also looking at other, other sectors where there might be opportunities to unlock funding for livestock, whether that's in the health or nutrition sectors as well. I don't know if Peter or C Cynthia or Isabel want to, or even Bunny want to add on to that. Uh, but I would like to get into the groups and I think you can also work on, these are great questions also for the groups to work on. Anyone else have anything to add? No? I hope that kind of starts to answer your questions, Mariam. And again, I think these are good questions. Isabel, did you want to say something? I see your light on now. Okay. <laughs> uh, great. Uh, Mariam, and again, we can talk about, thank you, I see your thumbs up. So let's break into the groups and really like start to talk uh, together. Thank you. And we'll move into the groups and see you back in about 35 minutes. Okay, so what I'd like to do, everybody, before we wrap up, is just to reflect a little bit on the conversations we had. Now, in our group, they were quite un unlike what I had expected, but very, very rich. So what I'd like to do is just I'm going to post in the in the I'm going to post into the chat um, one a, a question, a surprising insight. If you can take 10, 20 seconds to think about what your surprising insight is, if you could then post. Wait a second, I'll tell you when. If you can type it in the chat, but don't post it yet. Just type it in the chat. What surprising insight came out from your conversation? It might just be an insight. Maybe there wasn't a surprise. So I'm going to give you a countdown, five, four, three, two, one. If you can now post your surprising insights or insights, perhaps that would be also be fine. If you go ahead and post them. I'm not seeing any at the moment. So maybe there were no insights in our groups. Can we post them now? Yes, please post your insights. Okay, what are we seeing? Posting the insights. There's quite a range. Um, can I have, um, Cynthia, can you give me a hand? Tell me what we're seeing in these insights. We're getting a whole bunch of them actually, right? What are we seeing from the insights? Cynthia, can you help me? What have we got? Very interesting stuff. We are hearing um, Mariam saying how, how to break into the WTO. We are hearing Alex talking about they need to clarify more family, the donor investor targets. Um, Rupshaw talks about institutions continue to remain important in Rangeland. Um, uh, Sasika, I think I said that, I hope I said that right. Need to work with in-country partners, including national government. Karen Smith would say it was great to hear about Glatry and looks forward to working with us um, and has exited because she has another meeting. Um, Namukolo, I can see her comment here. I've lost it again. Oops. Um, Isabel is in national policies a key toward African group of negotiators. Really important, Ali. Um, yeah. Good. Okay, I'm going to very quickly post one more very quickly for you. Um, second, next second one this is the last one. Is there a critical gap in our thinking that you've identified or heard or picked up? Is there a critical gap? And Isabel, if you can help me to make sense of this one, a critical gap, if you can take, if you can just take 20 seconds, what's a critical gap 
that you've identified have we missed something completely critical then i'm going to give you another 10 seconds <clears throat> thank you very much be more people centered and go ahead if you can post now and then isabel will, will help me to make sense of the critical gaps i'm hoping thank you mariam be more people centered okay critical gaps if you could post them now would be good isabel can you help me with the okay now you posted yours i was isabel. typing yes yeah mm. so i was focused on um yes on people and uh, oh yeah we did forget a bit of the of the of, of the youth uh possibly as well yeah how we target them what kind of um evidence they they want to see the change in habits the interest is quite different my kids are all about animal welfare so i'm sure other, other youth as well like that and the evidence uh yeah a lot of sometimes we have evidence but not sufficient and uh, in my group it was the same as well um we know what people eat in general but not in specifics and they are diet transitions people are changing the way they eat what they eat how they eat and therefore if you want to um to provide advice then you have to think about that not only what they eat right now but what you know what are the diets transitions in diets and then yes, uh, we seem to always be stuck to the same species, milk, eggs, and um, and red meat. But there's other 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 livestock derived food and rabbits and uh, guinea pigs and things like that. So we should not forget those as well. Um, okay. Yes, and on on the rangelands, highlighting I think more positive cases and not only the negative ones. I guess from from what I see here. Thanks, uh, Marianne. I see you. Sh I see you saying bye. Oh, you want to to speak? Yeah. No, you want you want to say bye. Yes. Yeah, um, really and food safety is yeah. as well quite um, quite quite important. Um, and then the challenge that uh, Antonio reminded us is: and what do you do when people don't think that livestock is um, is a solution for climate change? Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Antonio. Sure. I think that's a, a challenge. Mm. Okay. I think that was the end of that quick wrap. Um, Michael, do I hand over to you to summarize yeah. the meeting and to tell us what happens next? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to do a big summary. I'm just going to thank everybody for really taking the uh, the time to meet with us and kind of give us some inputs into this. We, we're, we're moving very quickly ahead with the proposal and you know, we are going to use what we've come up with here to continue the, to refine and iterate on, the, uh, on our kind of concept. Uh, and we expect, you know, if everything goes to fruition, that we'll start GLAD 3 in July. So, uh, you know, we have a couple of months now. If there's things that you feel that you would like to get more in or learn more about, uh, just contact us and we can continue to discuss. I think once we get a better idea of where we are, maybe sometime in uh, May or June, we'd probably start to contact people and and start to kind of figure out kind of startups you know again we'd like to have you were in a group you know and part of that work package to continue to have conversations with the with you uh to further develop the kind of uh you know approach and what we want to do in these different work packages so uh, i think this is just really the start to the conversation rather than getting inputs and then see you in three years or something yeah we really see this as the start and we'll continue this uh over the course i think you know everybody if everybody's on I uh, just wanted to, you know, the GLAD Livestock uh, D group. I hope everyone's on there. I think everybody is, if I see the leftovers we have here. But if not, let us know and maybe we'll send out an email on that. We'll also send maybe the final proposal or any kind of comments once we have that kind of officialized with uh, the gates. And with that, I think, again, thank you a lot. It, it's always great to have these conversations and hopefully we can see everybody in person at some point in the near future as well. Thank Thanks you so very much. much. Keep well. You, See you soon, all. Ciao. Thank A pleasure you. to meet you. Ciao.